Hey, come here. Check this out real quick. Check what out, bro? My portal. Nah, we're about to make a stack on Tron right now. Okay, so this girl Ren, she's a musician, hit me up on Instagram and wanted me to do a portal tutorial in Unity 3D with ARKit. First of all, I love her. Second of all, I know portals are pretty played out at this point, but for obvious reasons, we're going to have to do a tutorial on this, so hopefully you guys can support my decision. Now there are some exciting things coming up though. I do want to definitely do a tutorial on the native integration of Unity and Vuforia 11 because I found out that their ground plane detection actually supports more Android phones than uh, AR Core does at this point. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, the other thing is AR Kit just came out with vertical plane detection. So now we can put things on walls. So I do have a, a good app idea in mind for that. Anyway, today we're going to make another dimension similar to the Upside Down from The Stranger Things, which is, in my opinion, the best show since The X-Files. Uh, we're going to be doing everything in C-sharp uh, in Unity 3D, so we're ultimately going to build out for uh, iOS through Xcode, so we'll end up with an iPhone app. But the same technique could work with uh, Android and AR Core, so I'll actually point you guys uh, to a resource that'll walk you through that later. Now, a lot of people do an entirely different world inside a portal with like a fully rendering skybox and everything, but I like the idea of another dimension kind of running parallel to the current one, uh, similar to how they explain it in, in the Stranger Things. Picture an acrobat standing on a tightrope. Now the tightrope is our dimension. So we're going to use a transparent skybox, so you can actually still see the real world uh, in the other dimension, but there's gonna be some different effects like some smoke and those floaty particles like in the show. Now, how do we enter this other dimension? You create a doorway. So our portal is gonna be like a tear in time and space for entering this other dimension. Like everything else, when I set out to make this uh, portal, I naively thought that it would be easy. Turns out, it's not. Big surprise. I had played around with uh, render textures before, which allow you to basically project what a camera is seeing onto a plane or a quad, so you have one camera used for your game view and you have another camera off screen that is displaying what it's rendering onto some surface, which you can look at from the main camera. I thought this is how everyone was doing it, but the more I played around with it, uh, this method was kind of riddled with problems. After doing some research, I found this beautiful Australian man's YouTube channel. Uh, he has an amazing 16 part series on making portals with both ARKit and AR Core, So they work for Android or iOS. So I'll link to that in the description below. So if you want this to work for Android, um, definitely check out his series. Uh, he uses a technique with shaders called stencils, which I know nothing about. So I learned literally so much from his videos and I cannot say enough good things about them. So today we're just going to summarize his technique, which works extremely well. Uh, we're going to have basically one portal shader on our portal window that's gonna be clear, but it decides uh, what to render and what not to render when you're looking through it. So each object on the other side of our portal is going to need to have a modified shader to tell it whether to render or not. So let's get right into it. Okay, so open up Unity and start a new project, call it whatever you want, and go to the asset store, and the first thing we need is the Unity AR Kit plugin. So search for that and import that into your project. Okay, once we have that, uh, click on examples and we want uh, Unity AR Kit scene, click this and drag this scene into your assets folder just so we can kind of see everything we're working on and double click this to open it. This is a scene that we're going to be working with and modifying. So go to, before we forget, file build settings and switch your platform to iOS. Okay, so in your build settings, first of all, let's uh, highlight all these other scenes that we're not going to use and uh, remove selection. And then um, we want this scene in our build settings, Unity AR Kit scene. That's what we're going to be building out to our phone later. Uh, now, before we forget, let's go to player settings and let's just get everything set up to build out so that we don't forget when we're done. So inside the bundle identifier, put com dot your company name dot your app name. So we're going to go portal test two. Is that good? Yeah, that's fine. And then let's see, da, da, da. camera usage description. We got something in there that's important. And I don't know if we need to do this, but let's change the target minimum uh, build version to 11.0. Okay, now we're done there. So first of all, let's eliminate the unnecessary things that we don't need. So random cube, we don't need that. Uh, delete the random cube. 
And then let's see, generate planes, uncheck this because we don't want those like blue planes showing up on the ground. Okay, so we did all that. Now, let's first create our portal. So that's gonna be a child of the hit cube parent. So let's create an empty game object and let's call it portal. Uh, delete this hit cube, we don't need that. And then to get this portal to work, whenever we touch the screen, uh, wherever our finger is pointing to in the real world, this portal will show up on the ground at that location. So we'll, in order to get that to work, we need to add this Unity AR hit test example. And it's looking for a hit transform, which is this hit cube parent here. So drag this in and collision layer, set this to everything just in case. I don't know if we need to do that, but let's set it there just in case. And so now we need to create our portal. So if we switch over to the scene view, uh, we can double click our portal here and it'll kind of center our camera on this empty game object. So create a uh, 3D object cube and right now we're just going to construct our portal. So let's rename this uh, post left. And uh, let me check my notes here. I believe I made these, okay. Uh, one by 28 by one. So that is our leftmost post. Bring that over a little bit. Let's duplicate this and let's make our right post. Okay. Let's drag this over here. And then let's make our center post. So duplicate this again and go center post. And I think I made this 14 units tall and one by 14 by one. And then uh, let's double click this, zoom in there, and then uh, bring this up and rotate it 90 degrees about the Z. and then just bring this down so that it's sitting right here. Okay, that looks relatively okay. Now let's go to Google and we're gonna just get a, um, I don't know, like a wooden texture or let's go bark texture. We're just gonna download this image so we can throw it on our portal, uh, you know, exterior here. So let's go, this one looks good. I like that kind of that kind of dark look. So we'll go with that, bark text. All right, so pull that into your assets folder. And then let's slap it on these posts here. Probably should have done this before we duplicated it, but hey, I'm not that forward thinking. Okay, so I believe we got this on everything. Oh, you know what, let's move our light to get some light on this situation here. Move it over and let's just rotate it. Rotate it so that it's pointing at our portal. We'll move it back, move it up a little bit. So now when we go there, we can actually see and yeah, our wood texture is on there. So it's looking pretty good. Now we need to create our portal window. This is what we're gonna add that special uh, shader and material to later. So let's create a 3D object quad is what we want. This is just a plane with uh, less triangles. So scale this such that it's filling up the whole space of your portal. Okay, looking good. That is everywhere. Now, let's rename this portal. Oh, rename it portal window. We don't want two op game objects with the same name. All right, now before we get into shaders or anything weird, let's import uh, assets, uh, standard assets particle system. And we're just gonna make those, we're gonna make like th that kind of little floaty particle effect and we're going to make uh, some kind of like smoke particle effect to add to the eeriness of it. Uh, that's like as far as we're gonna take it. I'm probably not gonna do like actually, like I know I had a tree in the intro and stuff. Um, I'm probably not gonna do that in the actual tutorial, but you guys will be, able, you'll know at least how to add that by the time we learn all this stuff here. You'll be able to add whatever you want on the other side of the portal, matter of fact. Okay, now click on the portal and uh, create an empty game object. We're gonna call this smoke particles. And first we're gonna do the particle effect for like the kind of smoky fog going around everywhere. So add a component particle system. Okay, that looks 
good. Now, you want to raise it up above the portal and then rotate it like 90 degrees so everything is going downwards. So that's good. Now, I'm going to use, I saved these values rather than like, I don't know, just guessing and building out and seeing if it works good. I just recorded these values in my notes, so I'm just going to read them off to you guys. So first of all, let's go to, oh, let's go to the color. And we're going to make this like a dark bluish black with like uh, maybe like 50% transparency. So something, uh, yeah, something like that looks pretty good. And then let's go to emission. We're going to set this to 100, I believe. Yeah. Okay, so that way we're going to have a lot of different particles. Now we're going to go down here to render and we're going to change the minimum particle size to 0.8, change the max to 5. And then uh, under material, find like the smoke material for now. We're going to change this later. But yeah, just add this smoke material for now and pause this so that your computer doesn't freeze. Because I know mine will. All right, I'm actually going to, I'm going to disable this for right now. Okay, now let's do the same thing. Create empty and name this uh, floating particles. And these are going to be the white little floaty things that go go everywhere. So add another particle system component to this. Oh man, particle system I said. Okay, particle system. And then we're going to keep this color white and change this emission to 500. Oh, and then we have to do the same thing we did before. So like raise it up in the air and then rotate the X by 90 degrees so it's pointing downwards. Okay, very good. Uh, oh, let's change the start lifetime to two so that we get that kind of continuous stream. And then let's bring it down maybe a little bit. Okay, that looks all right there. And then let's see, oh, shape. Uh, radius, change this to 10. Okay, that'll give us kind of like a bigger coverage area. Oh, and then in smoke particles, we forgot to change the radius. So in shape, uh, radius, we can actually make this smaller. I think, what did I use? Okay, 0 0.01 for smoke. Okay, so go down to size and let's change the size to uh, 0 0.01 for the minimum particle size and 0 0.015 for the max particle size. And then just choose uh, like the default particle for now. Uh, and we're gonna also change this later. Okay, so that looks good there. And smoke particles, now that we change the radius, to make it smaller. Maybe we can run that without our computer freezing. It's still not great, but all right, we'll, we'll leave it for now. So let's stop all these. And actually one important thing we need to do is if you'll notice when you play these particle systems, oh man, I can't stop. Play the other one. Okay. When you play these particles are moving really fast. We want them to go slower. Now the way that we would normally do that, is somewhere here you have simulation speed. We could set it to like 0.01 and yeah, particles are nice, like they're, they're going really slow, it looks good. But the problem with that is they're not covering the entire area that we want. So actually what we wanna do is we're going to make like a sample function. Like with animations, you can actually um, sample, an, like give an animation uh, a time, say like, you know, half a second into the animation, you can sample it at that particular time. So all the game objects move to where they would be at that time in the animation. As far as I know, that doesn't exist for the particle system. So we're going to actually create our own uh, kind of particle system sample script right now. So in the assets folder, right click and create a C-sharp script and just call it um, particle sample. Okay, the first thing we need is this script is going to go on to each uh, particle system game object. So let's go um, particle system PS and sorry, just make this private. It doesn't really matter. And then in start, let's go to um, let's go PS equals get component particle system. That'll give us a reference to the particle system component. Okay, and then we're going to make first of all a coroutine that we're going to set the sample rate or the simulation speed rather super high for like a tenth of a second and then set the speed to what we want. So that way the particles are gonna, particles are gonna simulate really fast. They're gonna all go down into position and then we're gonna 
flip the simulation speed and make it slower. Uh, so let's just call this sample particle routine. And then we don't need an update function, we can delete that. And then before we forget, uh, let's just add yield return new, wait for seconds, uh, 0.1. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to change the simulation speed, you need a reference to the, uh, the main component of the particle system. So go var main equals ps.main. Okay, so we have that. Then we can go main dot simulation speed. And let's set it equal to 1,000 off the bat. Let's wait for a tenth of a second. And then copy this and let's set the simulation speed back to, let's go... Uh, 0.05 maybe? Okay, that looks good. Oh, uh, ps.play. We want to play the particle system after we set that initial speed, wait for a tenth of a second, and then slow it back down. Okay, so now let's just start this coroutine up in the start function, start coroutine, sample particle routine. And that is all we need to do for our kind of uh, particle script. So let's close this and drag this onto each one of the particle systems, or particle game objects that we have. Cool. Now if we go to game view, press play, and we should see that all of our particles are moving very slowly. I don't know if it's because I'm screen recording or what, but these smoke particles are giving me like tons of problems, and I have not had that happen before. Okay. I'm just going to change this to 100 for now. We'll see what it looks like when I, when I build out. Okay, I'm actually going to turn off my smoke particles for right now because they're just giving me too many problems. But uh, let's press play and let's see what it looks like with our new particle script added to these game objects. Yeah, so now our particles are going the full length where they're supposed to and their simulation speed is slow. So we are good there. Okay, now we're going to make our uh, first portal shader. This is the shader that's going to go on our portal window. So go into your assets folder and right click and create a, let's see, where is it? Shader, right there. Uh, do unlit shader. And let's call this uh, portal window. Okay, now remove everything so that we only have uh, subshader and pass. Okay, so inside subshader, go Z right off because we don't want to write to the Z buffer here. We're doing something a little different and set color mask to zero uh, because we want our portal window to be clear and set call to off because we're gonna need that later uh, for rendering our um, transparent skybox. Okay, now we're going to modify the stencil, stencil buffer which works as a per pixel mask for uh, saving or discarding pixels. So inside subshader, go uh, stencil Okay, so inside stencil, go ref1 and go pass replace. So if you want more information on what exactly this is doing, I don't even want to try to explain it. Uh, definitely watch Pirates Just AR's video and he goes into like great detail about uh, what all this stencil, stencil buffer stuff is. So uh, definitely check out his series for sure. Now, this should actually be all we need in this portal window shader. So let's minimize this for now and let's uh, create a material in our standard assets folder here and let's call it uh, portal mat. Oh, you know what? Go back to that portal window script and let's go, let's put this inside a folder called portal and let's just, yeah, leave it called portal window. That's fine. So then in our um, newly created material here, go to, uh, let's see, portal, portal window. That's what we want. And now drag this portal mat onto the portal window and make sure that's materials on there, it is. So we're good. Now it's not gonna look like anything now because it renders clear, but that is all that we want it to do so far. Okay, now we need to make the shaders for the stuff that's in our, uh, well, for our particles, the stuff that's gonna render inside the portal. So um, we can't exactly modify the shaders that are inside Unity out of the box. We need to actually go to Google and download them. So go to Google and type in uh, Unity shader download, and that should bring up the download archive. Click this and then find your version of Unity. I'm on 2017.3. So 2017.3 downloads Mac and I want, where are they? Stand, built in shaders, yep. Bring up this, save this to your desktop, go into this folder and 
what we want is we want uh, the skybox cube shader, and then we want our particle shader. Let's drag these two shaders into Unity, and these are going to be the ones that we're going to be modifying. Okay, so double click both of these to open in Mono, mono Develop. Okay, let's first modify our uh, particle alpha blended shader. Oh, let's let's first put it into the portal folder. Is that what it was? Capital P. Portal folder and call this one particles. I'll we'll go capital P again. Okay. Inside properties go underscore stencil, and we'll call this stencil num. And this, oops, this is an int, and we're gonna set it to six. Um, this is an enumerated type. I believe three is when you set it to equal, six is not equal. So by default, we're gonna be outside the portal when we first place it. So that's why we're setting, a, setting this to six, which is uh, not equal. So like I said, for more information on this stuff, definitely watch um, Pirates Just AR series. He's got way more information than I could tell you about this stuff. Now, um, inside, uh, oh, you know what? Create some space inside subshader and then go back to portal window and we need this uh, stencil ref one pass replace put that into here but instead of pass replace we're going to go comp and we're going to pass in underscore um, underscore stencil yeah that looks good okay now we're going to do basically these same things in the skybox shader so inside sub shader we'll put uh, Put that stencil and then we're going to put our uh, enumerated type up here as well and then this took a little bit of research in order to get a uh, oops in order to get a uh, transparency rendering in the skybox we need this line here blend source alpha one minus source alpha and then there is a function at the bottom that i believe yeah return half c1 uh, I believe the second parameter is uh, transparency, so set that to 0.5. So this should be all that we need. Let's go back to Unity and make sure these compiled. So just click on them and make sure there's no errors, which looks pretty good. Okay, so right click here and create a material. And let's call this um, particle portal and then choose the, let's see, portal particles and then do this again and we're going to need a separate one for portal smoke and then choose yeah portal particles material and okay so for the portal particles find uh, some kind of particle texture here that's fine and then for the smoke yeah let's just go this one for now and then change this color to like a I don't know, kind of like a dark blue. Yeah, that's fine. And then this is going to, we're just going to leave that. Okay, looks good. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? In this uh, skybox cube shader, put this in the portal, the portal folder as well. And let's call this portal skybox. Now we also need to right click create material and this is our portal skybox material which we're going to give it portal portal skybox shader and change this to like a dark blue kind of thing uh, yeah like right there and yeah looks good like about 50% alpha perfect okay save all that now we need to put our uh, let's see, smoke particles. Let's just re enable it and change the material to portal particles. Um, let's see, so smoke. So we want, sorry, portal smoke. And then floating particles. Change this to portal particles. Portal, portal. I named that backwards, but whatever. I drank too many beers today. I'm sorry. Okay, now in the main camera, before we could forget to do this, uh, let's go to 
Uh, clear flags, set this to skybox. That way we can render our skybox. Let's go to window lighting settings and put in our portal skybox up here. Now this is gonna cause problems in the editor. If you try to move around at all, everything is gonna go haywire. So just, we're not playing around in the scene view anymore. We need to add uh, a collider and a rigid body so that we can detect collisions because we need to start uh, detecting collisions and uh, doing events on collisions with the camera and the portal. So go down here. Oh, you know what, before I forget, change the clipping plane to 0.01 and then add a component to the camera called the rigid body. Uncheck use gravity. We can minimize that. Add another component, uh, box collider. And we can make sure we set this to is trigger because we're going to check for uh, trigger events. And let's make the size like 0.5 by 1 by 4. So we have a nice long skybox for detecting collisions. Or skybox. We have a nice long box collider for detecting collisions. All right, now finally, we're going to create our portal controller script. So create C sharp script. Let's call this portal controller. And before we forget to do this, let's drag this onto our portal window. Okay, so inside here, first thing we need is a uh, material array. Let's call that materials. And this is where we're gonna drag in all of our materials that are gonna go on the other side of the portal. And so we can loop through them and set them to equal or not equal. So either they're gonna render or they're not, okay? So we need that. Now, we also need a reference to the mesh renderer of this um, portal window. So just call it mesh renderer. And we're also going to need a reference to the, oh, I forgot something. Up here. We need to access uh, some things from the um, ARKit namespace. So let's go namespace, uh, Unity Engine dot XR dot iOS. And this will allow us to access some of the stuff from the uh, Xcode or um, ARKit plugin. Okay, so we got that. Now we need Unity AR video. Okay, now the reason that we need this mesh renderer reference and the Unity AR video reference is that you're going to find that we're detecting collisions, like I said, when you walk through the portal to set the um, uh, object stencil buffers to equal or not equal. And what happens during that transition is like you get this kind of weird glitch effect. So every time you walk through the portal, you know, forward or backward, uh, the screen kind of glitches. So we're going to do a couple strange things to rectify that situation. Now, some of these were just like random ideas I had um, of things I was just gonna, I just kind of played with these things until they worked. So what we're gonna do is during the transition period, we're going to set the mesh renderer off on this quad and also Unity AR video. Uh, let's actually just go to that right now. So right click and uh, go to declaration. In here, you're gonna see that uh, if not Unity editor, so uh, when we are actually built out on the phone, this on pre-render function gets called, and this is what updates the frame, uh, the camera frame from the Unity AR kit. So we're actually going to um, not render anything during this transition transitionary period so that we can eliminate uh, all kind of glitches that are gonna happen. So in here, let's actually create a, uh, let's go hide an, ins hide an inspector, because we don't wanna, really wanna see this, but uh, public bool, and let's go should render. And then inside this on pre-render function, let's go if should render. Only if should render is true are we gonna do everything in this block. <coughs> so save that, that's good. And then let's see, what do we wanna do here? Oh, the other thing we're gonna need is we're gonna need two bools. So let's just go private bool uh, is inside portal set that uh, default to false and private bool is outside. Also set that equal to false. Now let's keep our start function. We're not gonna need an update function, but what we are gonna need is uh, an enumerator that we're going to go delay change mat. And we're gonna pass in the stencil num that we want.
So we're doing this so that we can do something like yield return new wait for end of frame. We're going to do that while uh, this transition is happening. So uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, Unity AR video dot should render set that to false. Then we're going to wait for end of frame and we're going to set the mesh renderer um, the mesh renderer component uh, enabled to false as well. And now we can perform this transition. So uh, for each material mat in materials. So this is going to loop through our uh, array of materials. We're going to go mat dot set int, and this is where we pass in that stencil property. Mat dot set int stencil, and we're going to pass in that number uh, from the top. Okay, and now we're going to wait for another frame, and then turn back on the mesh render, and then uh, we're going to allow the Unity AR video to uh, start rendering again as well. Now, don't ask me this. I know this looks a little strange, like we're waiting for frames in between, you know, rendering the AR video and rendering the mesh, the mesh render again. But uh, this was just something that I played with a lot. I maybe built out like, I don't know, 30 or 40 times testing different configurations of this uh, routine. And this just seemed to be what worked best for me. Maybe there's another way uh, or a better way. I don't know it, but this is just what worked for me. So this is what we're going to do. Okay, so now we need to make our functions for uh, when we're outside the portal and when we're inside the portal. So just to make it easier, um, let's go public void outside portal. And uh, inside this, we're going to start our um, delay change mat coroutine. And we're going to pass in three to set it to equal. And then let's just copy this, paste this. And this is going to be inside portal. And we're going to pass in six. Okay, now by default, uh, when this script first runs, we want to be outside the portal. Because in ARKit, we're going to set the portal to be kind of off in the distance. So um, you're never going to be inside the portal on first start. So default to outside the portal. Now, finally, the last thing we need to do is uh, on trigger enter. Or no, sorry, on trigger stay, collider col, and this function is going to run while our box collider is colliding with the portal window. So we have that big long collider. So what we're going to do while we're inside this function is we're going to be constantly checking if we're um, inside the portal or if we're outside the portal, all the whole time that that uh, box collider is colliding with our portal window. So first of all, we need our player position. So let's go uh, vector three player position uh, player POS equals the camera dot main dot transform dot position. And then, oh, you know what? Sorry. To that, what we need to add is the uh, camera's forward vector plus we're going to add the camera's uh, clipping plane. I think it's near clip plane, yeah. Plus the camera's near clip plane, and then in an, in a perfect world, we would just have to add this near clip plane, but from my experience, I multiplied it by four, and that seemed to work. Um, you could probably play around with that number and find something a little better, but uh, that's what worked for me. So that should be what we need as far as player position. Oh, sorry, you know what, this should be times. Okay, now we need to test if our camera is in the center of the portal. So we can go uh, if transform dot inverse transform point, and we can pass in player pause. Um, and then we want to check if the dot Z is less than or equal to zero. This is where we want our logic to go as far as switching everything. Oh, we need another parenthesis there. Yeah, now here we also, we can't just check if, if the transform position dot Z is less than or equal to zero. We need to do the inverse transform point because our uh, portal could be rotated at any direction. So we can't just use that, that normal Z position like we ideally would like to. Now, in here, we wanna do something like if is outside, 
we're going to set is outside to false immediately so this doesn't run again and we want to set is inside to true and then here we're going to call inside portal okay now put your bracket there we got to move this over and then uh, basically or else we want to do um, the opposite of what we just did so let's copy this paste this here and let's go if is inside now let's see is inside equals false is outside equals true and then this is going to call outside portal okay let's get rid of all these unneeded spaces here and this should be pretty good oh you know what I did wrong parenthesis goes there not there okay so go to the portal and click on unity AR hit test example and open that up in uh, mono develop Okay, now what we need to do in here is that when every time you uh, click the phone screen to place the portal, you want to make sure that the portal is facing the camera because it's just much easier that way. So in here, this um, hit test result type function gets called every time a new hit test is detected. So click enter here and right before it returns true, we want to save our current angle. So vector3 current angle equals transform.euler angles. And then we're going to go transform dot look at this will make this transform look at the main camera so pass in camera dot main uh, dot transform and then the last thing we want to do is transform dot Euler angles and we're going to pass in a new vector 3 and we only want the Y angle of the portal to actually turn we don't want it to turn on the uh, X or the Z. So let's go transform.eulerangles.x and paste that again transform.eulerangles.z and then in the middle here for our Y oh you know what I'm an idiot I did that backwards the only one that we want to save is transform.eulerangles.y we want to set everything else to this beginning angle that we had. So current angle dot Z and current angle dot X. Okay, there we go. This should do it right here. Now, the one thing we forgot to do is uh, we got, forgot to load our uh, materials, or materials array here. So go to materials, size. We're going to make this, uh, let's see, how many do we have? Two. I believe we only have two. We have our particle material and we have our, oh no, we have three. We have the smoke material, the particle material, and the skybox material. So particle, port part particle portal, oh my god. I can't, I don't know why I named that so screwed up. Portal skybox and portal smoke. Okay, we got that. Then the mesh render is actually this mesh render. So we'll just drag that in here. And Unity AR video is on the main camera drag that in there all of our references should be loaded and we should be good to go so let's build this out and see what I screwed up okay so I built out and of course things were broken so number one go to the um, let's see hit cube parent and go to the portal and then go to the smoke particles and you know what this isn't gonna work right now the scene view does not work when the skybox is turned on with all this shader stuff so set that to none and then click on your uh, smoke particles in the scene view and make sure when I built out they were like way down here bring them like decently high up maybe like something like eh, go like 90 okay on the Y and that should be good for the smoke particles the oh the other thing is uh, our smoke material I choose I chose the wrong sprite so go to portal smoke and choose uh, particle cloud white okay all right so that should be good for that now there's two things in the scripts that I screwed up so go to unity AR video should render make sure that's defaultly set to true and then portal controller um, is outside make sure that is set to true as well okay so I believe that should be it all right so let's build this out and try it one more time wait don't build out yet make sure to put your skybox back on Okay, save the scene and now we can build out. 
All right, let's test this bad boy out here. All right, looks pretty good. Let's walk through this guy. Oh man, we still got a little bit of a flicker, but it's not too bad. Could be worse. All right, that worked. We didn't have much there, so. All right, everything is looking pretty good. Um, that's it, that's all I got for today. Definitely like this video if it helped you guys out. Let me know in the comments what you wanna see in future videos. And uh, follow me on Instagram, at Matthew Hallberg. That's where I put all of my latest projects. And uh, definitely check out Pirates Just AR's YouTube channel. He's got some really good stuff on there. All right, have a good night.